you've likely been hearing about the yen carry trade. Analysts say a key threat remains, the so-called yen carry trade. And you might have heard how its unwinding has caused a lot of market turmoil. How much money people borrowed in yen to buy Japanese stocks, among many other assets that are now unwinding. Unwinding, unwinding. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how the yen carry trade is supposed to work using an easy to follow example, and then explain exactly how it can stop working so suddenly. My name is Preet, I used to be a stockbroker, and I'm currently a consultant to the wealth management industry focusing on commercial applications of behavioral finance. And this channel is for people who want to learn more about money and investing without being told to buy meme coins, or that the market is just flipped, like every month, or that the Great Reset is finally here, or whatever other BS is making the rounds with the grifters. At its most basic level, a carry trade is typically associated with finding a country where interest rates are super low, so you borrow money there where it's cheap, and then you take the proceeds of that loan and invest in a country where interest rates are higher. The difference in interest rates is referred to as the carry. Now, this is not a precise definition of carry trades, but let's park that for now, explain the typical currency carry trade, and then circle back once we have a conceptual model that's easy to understand. A yen carry trade is simply when you execute a carry trade and the funding currency is the yen. The funding currency is just the fancy way of saying the currency in which you borrowed money or are short to begin with. So let's say that interest rates in Japan are super low, like 0.25%. And let's also say that interest rates in the United States in a savings account are 4%. If we borrowed the equivalent of 1 million US dollars in Japan and took that money and put it in the US savings account, we'd be paying 0.25% in interest in Japan, which on $1 million equals $2,500. But we would be earning 4% interest on that million dollars in the US or $40,000 we'd be making $37,500 every year. That's a return of 3.75% and it sounds pretty good. Now, of course, we haven't factored currency conversion or other costs, but you get the picture. It is this interest rate differential that is the carry, at least in this case. Okay, so with this very simplistic overview of how it works in principle, let's now look at a bit of history to the carry trade concept in practice to go a little bit deeper. About 30 years ago in Japan, in response to deflation and a long period of stagnation for their economy, Japan's central bank engaged in what is now commonly known as ZERP, which stands for Zero Interest Rate Policy. This was in the mid-90s, and interest rates in Japan were basically low for a very, very long time. And at the same time, interest rates in the U.S. were closer to 6%. But this is very important. A key part of the now famous yen carry trade was the overwhelming thinking that Japan should also take steps to try to weaken the yen for, amongst other reasons, make their exports more attractive because it would make it cheaper for people in other countries to buy their stuff. So when you take this all together, super low interest rates, plus an effort to specifically devalue the yen, that made the yen carry trade especially attractive. Because if you borrowed money in Japan in yen to initiate your carry trade, and then when you had to pay it back after the yen had also lost value, you effectively have to pay back less money and your trade looks even more profitable. So let's now go back to our simple example and this time we will introduce the exchange rate component. If we want to borrow the equivalent of 1 million US dollars from a lender in Japan, we borrow in yen. Let's say that when we initiate the trade, the US dollar could buy 100 yen. That means we would borrow 100 million yen at 0.25%. Our interest payment for one year would be 250,000 yen. For now, we're going to continue to ignore currency conversion costs. We take our 100 million yen and convert it to 1 million US dollars and put that into a savings account that pays 4% interest. So we get our $40,000 of interest earned over the year. Now let's say that the yen has depreciated, it's devalued from 100 yen per US dollar to 110 yen per dollar. Remember, if the yen is losing value, it will take more yen to buy one US dollar. 
Let's also just assume that we unwind our trade after one year and that any interest owed is only payable at the end of that year, just to make things easier to follow. Our 1 million US dollars has grown with the interest earned of $40,000 to 1 million and $40,000. We need some of that to pay off our loan in Japan, which was 100 million yen plus the interest of 250,000 yen for a total amount owing of 100 million 250,000 yen. At the new exchange rate of 110 yen per US dollar, we take 100,250,000 yen and divide that by 110 to get $911,363.64. So if we take what we have and we subtract what we owe, we get 128,000 and change, and that's a gain of 12.9%, which looks pretty damn impressive. So remember, it's these two ingredients together, the carry of the interest rate differential, plus the move in the exchange rate based on a policy of trying to devalue the yen that made the yen carry trade so profitable for so long that it became very famous. However, as you can see, the return on this trade was juiced because the yen devalued. And you can probably surmise that an increase in value of the yen would work the other way and create a drag on returns. So let's look at what happens when the funding currency appreciates in our example. Let's go back and assume that the yen appreciates from 100 yen per dollar to 90 yen per dollar. Remember, it's gone up in value, so it now takes less yen to buy one US dollar. Now at the end of the year, we still owe 100,250,000 yen, but when we divide that by 90, we get just over 1.1 million that we now have to convert to cover that. There's just one problem. We only have $1,040,000, so we're short, in this case, just under $74,000. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said I would expand on the different forms of carry that exist. It's not just about an interest rate differential between a funding currency interest rate environment and putting that into a higher yielding environment in another country. The funding currency can be used to buy anything, including bonds, stocks, commodities, and so on. And that's what people do in practice. Now, you can ignore the next 20 seconds if you want and use the opportunity to hit the like button. But more technically, more recent theory suggests that an asset's carry is the expected return assuming its price remains the same. And I know what you're thinking. If the price doesn't change, how do you get a return? Well, for equities, the carry is related to the dividend yield. Bond carry is related to the slope of the yield curve, and for commodities, the convenience yield is the carry. Okay, you can stop ignoring me for now, but all of that basically means that you can find carry in places other than currency pairs or interest rate differentials between countries. Like for example, stocks. Now, of course, in the real world, we do have to look at the non-carry portion of returns, which are quite unpredictable. So what would happen if we borrowed 100 million yen, converted it to 1 million US dollars, and used that to buy stocks? And then those stocks went down 10%, and the yen also increased in value. Does that remind you of a scenario that happened recently? So let's go back to our example. Our $1 million is now only worth $900,000, because again, those stocks that we bought went down 10%. And if we closed out our trade to pay off the 100,250,000 yen we owe, and still assuming that the yen appreciated to 90 yen to the dollar, we are now short $213,000 and change, a loss of over 20% on our original $1 million initial position. And that is quite significant. And in the real world, what do you do when you see all this starting to happen, or you're worried that this is all starting to happen quickly, you don't wait to unwind. You sell the assets that you bought with the borrowed money pretty quickly. And this actually creates a knock-on effect because that selling creates more downward pressure on those assets. So the declines start to accelerate, which creates a race to the bottom, if you will. All the money flowing back into buying yen to wind down the trades means that there's also more demand for yen and the yen appreciates more and it gets very ugly very fast. So anyways, uh, that's a primer on the yen carry trade and how it's supposed to work and how it doesn't work from time to time. We glossed over some 
practical details like the fact that many people initiate these types of trades using forwards, futures, swaps, and other methods, but you get the idea in principle of what's trying to be done. Now, in terms of what this means for your portfolio, well, I can tell you what I did, nothing. Being able to understand what the headlines are talking about is one thing. Being able to predict what happens next is totally different and generally futile. If you have a proper long-term portfolio strategy, you shouldn't have to make knee-jerk changes in reaction to short-term news and developments. But hopefully understanding what has happened will give you a little less uncertainty and maybe reduce any fear or anxiety that might exist because managing our behaviors is one of the key components of successful long-term investing. Now, if you got this far without hitting the thumbs up, shame on you. What does it take? Moving your finger or thumb like an entire inch? But seriously, let me know in the comments if this explanation helped you understand the carry trade and carry trades in general. And it's always appreciated if you're a new viewer to subscribe to show your support for this channel. And I will see you in the next video. Can I have my money back, money back, money back? Can I have my money back, please, sir? Don't you want you saying, don't you want you doing? Can I have my money back, money back, money back? Can I have my money back, please, sir? to the movies and the movie broke down